continuous systems, strings, and the longitudinal vibration of axial beams. At the end of this section, you will be able to identify homogeneous boundary conditions for strings and for columns. You will be able to solve partial differential equations when there are homogeneous boundary conditions and free vibration in string problems. And you'll be able to solve partial differential equations with homogeneous boundary conditions and free vibration for beams, or we'll refer to them as columns, in axial deformation. In the grand scheme of this course now, uh, still under looking at linear systems, we began with one degree of freedom systems. We then uh, complicated that by adding additional degrees of freedom and looked at multi-degree of freedom systems and saw that we were more limited in the types of problems, at least in this class, that we're able to solve. And now we're going to increase the complexity again into continuous systems, where we're going to have an infinite number of degrees of freedom. And in this course, we are going to be focusing on strings and columns in this section. We are then going to look at beams in two sections, where we're going to have transverse vibrations. And in the continuous systems, we're going to be able to link it back to multi-degree of freedom systems, the previous unit, through the use of finite element analysis. And other types of continuous systems you could see would include plates and so on, but that will be reserved for a more advanced version of this class. So what are we looking at with these continuous systems? Well, as I talked about just previously, we're now going to see systems in which we have an infinite degrees of freedom. And just like we saw for multi degrees of freedom, as we added more degrees of freedom, we also added more natural frequencies. We added more mode shapes going to an infinite number of degrees of freedom. Technically, we have an infinite number of natural frequencies and an infinite number of mode shapes. However, getting these is going to be a different process than we used in the previous unit. And really, instead of mode shapes, we're going to be calling them eigenfunctions. But they will be analogous to what we saw for multi-degree of freedom systems. A big shift in what we're going to be doing in our analysis is going from one ODE that we saw for one degree of freedom systems to then shifting to multiple ODEs when we looked at two degree and higher multi-degree of freedom systems. But now in continuous systems, we're going to be seeing we have partial differential equations to solve, which in general are going to be much harder than one or even a series of ordinary differential equations. And this is going to require not only initial conditions like we saw before, but also we're going to need boundary conditions. And this shift is going to occur because now we're going to see that we will have functions of not only time, as we had in the previous units, but they will be also functions of space. And that is going to necessitate partial differential equations to solve these multivariable types of functions. And we'll be focusing in this section and in two sections, looking at how do we get closed form solutions. However, the types of systems in which we'll be able to obtain closed form solutions from a PDE are going to be very narrow. It's going to be for very simple cases only, for very simple homogeneous boundary conditions, and only for free vibrations, where we're going to be talking about columns or strings or transverse beams. Once we start to get more complicated than that, the PDEs are going to become increasingly difficult to solve by hand. And we're going to rely more on using finite element analysis when we get some extra complications. Where we will no longer be able to get a closed form solution, but we can get a good numerical approximation to the solution. And what we're going to be doing is using finite element analysis or FEA to discretize our continuous systems and really turn them into a multi-degree of freedom problem. And that multi-degree of freedom problem might be very high dimensional, but we know from the previous unit how we can solve those types of systems.